we're going to have a look at area. Now, if we want to know the area of the square, which has a side length of 3, um, what we want to know is sort of how much surface does this green bit cover. And for this rectangle that has a length of 6 and a breadth of um, 3, how much surface is being covered by this sort of brown bit of the whole rectangle. So you should remember from work you've done previously that what you're asking yourself is for these little squares that all have a length, a side length that's one, how many of these unit squares make up that whole green area? And what you can see is there are three of them across and three down. So in total, there are 3 times 3, which is 9 of them. And so this gives us a nice formula for our area of a square. We're always just going to say if the area, if the square had a side length, let's make it a, an S, then there'd be S going down this way. We've got S multiplied by S. So we've got S times S, which is just S squared we can write it as. And what about this rectangle? Well, how many of these little squares are there? There are six going along, and there are three rows of those, so it's six times three, which gives us 18. If we generalize that to say if this is the length and this is the breadth, our area of our rectangle will be equal to length times breadth. And these formulas are ones you should have worked with before. To work out the area of a square, you're going to just say side times side. And to work out the area of a rectangle, length times breadth. So it's worth writing these down in your homework book now. OK, I am going to now look at the area of a triangle. And what I'm going to try and convince you of is that the area of a triangle is half base times height, which we'll write as half BH. OK, let's see. What do I mean by the base? Well, here in this triangle, this is the base, right? This is sort of the bottom of the triangle. And the height comes, it's how tall is the triangle off this base, right? So you go from the very tippy top point of the triangle straight down, perpendicularly down to the base. So I'm telling you the area of this triangle will be half this B times H. Now, why will it be that? Well, the reason it is that is because this triangle, and this is what I want to show you, is actually, I can cut this triangle up. And if I cut this triangle up and make two of this triangle, if I put those pieces together, it'll actually make a rectangle. And so this triangle is just half of a rectangle. Let's have a look at how I see this. Have a look what's happening here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this triangle down here. And I'm going to make a copy of this, and I'm going to put it there, and I'm going to make a copy of this, and I'm going to put it there, and it'll make a rectangle. Have a look. I'm cutting it. I'm making a copy. I'm turning them over, and I'm putting them down. Can you see that this little bit here is just when I took this height, I got this, flipped it over, and it's there. So there are two of these. And this bit flipped it over, and it's there. So in this picture, I've got two of the original green triangle. What is the area of this rectangle? Well, it's B multiplied by H. So I've the area of the rectangle is the B multiplied by H, but I've managed to put two of the triangles into this area, 
So what's the area of the triangle? It's just half of that. So it's half BH. And I hope you'll be able to see that this is true for any triangle. If I've got a triangle and I've got its base and I've got the height, which comes from the tip all the way down perpendicular at 90 degrees to the base, what I have is that the area will be half BH. Have a look here again. I'm going to cut these two, these two pieces here and here and move them and you'll see I'll be able to put two of this triangle into a rectangle. Have a look. I start to cut that triangle. Can you see the two pieces that I'm now detaching and I'm turning them over and I've made a rectangle. So this rectangle consists of two of this original triangle the area of this rectangle is B times H, so the area of the original triangle is half BH. And this formula we can use for any triangle we want to. The area of a triangle is half the base times the height. Now the important thing is that the base and the height, and let's just check where that height came from originally, the height has to come from the very top down exactly at 90 degrees to the base. The area of a triangle we now know is half base times height. Now the tricky thing sometimes is to recognize the base and the height. The important thing is that the base is the kind of like a bottom of a triangle and the height is all the way from the furthest away point, furthest away vertex of the triangle down to that base at 90 degrees. Now, when I say bottom of the triangle, remember, we can always turn a triangle around. So the bottom won't necessarily appear at the bottom of your page. So have a look here. Here we have the base and the height has to be, let's look at the little vertex, the corner right opposite that base. And what you've got to do for the height is you've got to be coming down from that corner at 90 degrees to the base. And it is here. So this will be the base and this will be the height. Now if we look at the next one, so the area of this triangle will be half. 4 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12. 12, half of that, 6. So the area of this one is 6. Now have a look at this next one over here. We're tempted to think of this as the base. But if we had to think of this as the base, we need to go to the little corner directly opposite, so here, and we'd need to know how far is it from that corner directly down to the base, and we don't have that. So what we've got to do is turn ourselves on our head, and if we see this here as the base, then where is the corner opposite that? Do we have the height down to it? Yes, we do. We come directly at 90 degrees down to that. And so the area of this is going to be half 8 times 15. And that is going to give us an answer of 60. Because half of 8 is 4 and 4 times 15 gives me 60.